morning, church. Good morning. It's good to see you all. Welcome to this time of worship on the third Sunday in May and on Pentecost Sunday. You know, Pentecost comes 50 days after Easter. It celebrates the gift of the Holy Spirit, how it came upon the followers of Jesus, transforming them from frightened, timid followers into courageous witnesses and leaders. Do some refer to Pentecost as the birthday of the church? It's good to be together to celebrate on this day. We also greet all those who are joining with us online or viewing the service from your television set at home. Thank you for joining us today. Um, there are a few announcements to share with you as we get started. First, a few words of thanks. We thank everybody who made donations to our May Day appeal, who purchased personal care items for women and children, supported by Independence House in Hyannis, you know, CAPE's leading domestic violence emergency housing counseling and advocacy center. So if you've not brought your items in yet, um, please do so by next Sunday so we can get them ready to be delivered to Independence House. Um, just place them in the bins or on the table uh, near the lobster trap display area in the parish hall. You know, we also thank everybody who's donated to the May Day Fund, which will be used to assist you know, people in peril and other crisis situations in our local community. Um, donations can still be made if you'd like. You know, there's an insert in the bulletin, just fill it out, put it in the offering plate. Um, all names of, of donors and their corresponding dedications will be placed in the Sunday bulletin next week for Memorial Day uh, weekend. We also thank everyone who's helped out with our spring super sale yesterday. Now the weather was a bit challenging. <laughs> But we still had a really good day, church. We still had a really good day. I want to thank you all who prepared for the sale, who baked items to share, who set up work throughout the day, who came afterwards and helped clean up. Really appreciate everybody's effort. It was a great uh, team effort. Uh, we especially thank you know, Connie Swedlin, Penny Bach for their leadership. Don't be sure. You know, despite the rain and some other things, uh, a little chilly weather, I believe, Connie, would you make the announcement? We made $10,869. Uh, I wanted to give a special little shout out to Paula's granddaughter, the plus one. Um, yeah, so, you know, the, the young kids that could have been doing something maybe a little more fun, but they were tremendous out there. Yes. <laughs> Really wonderful, wonderful. Thank you all. And obviously the proceeds go to support our life together in the mission and ministry of our congregation. So thank you, thank you. Um, a couple other quick announcements. Our church council will be meeting after worship today in the sanctuary. We encourage all who are able to, to stay. Uh, this afternoon, from 4 to 6 p.m., um, everyone's invited to an intergenerational game night. Um, games will be available for adults and children, and uh, feel free to bring a favorite game to share with others as well. We'll be upstairs in our newly refurbished space. You know, pizza will be provided. Uh, feel free to bring a snack to share. But again, this afternoon, from 4 to 6, you all are welcome. This coming Saturday, we're having another hike. We'll be going to Bell's Neck. In Harwich, um, all the registered, we encourage you to meet in our parking lot at 10 a.m. Um, you know, feel free to invite a friend. It's a dog-friendly walk, so uh, bring your four-legged friend as well. Uh, the hike's about three miles, a great place to see birds and a herring run. Uh, so the herring might still be running. It'll be a, a wonderful opportunity this coming Saturday. Uh, a reminder, our church is offering scholarships once again to all graduating high school seniors and others you know, who are continuing their education in a variety of ways. Um, please, if you'd like an application, just speak with Val or myself or call the church office. <laughs> Two weeks from today, the first Sunday of June, June 2nd, we'll be having a potluck luncheon after worship, inviting people to assemble uh, the, 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 the materials that we have gathered together during the month of May, these personal care items that are going to go to Independence House. So 
So thank you for your tremendous response. In two weeks from today, if you'd like to be part of a team that will assemble these gift bags, we encourage you to stay after worship. And there'll be an opportunity to sign up our next Sunday. Just so if you would let us know what you might like to bring to share as well. And then later that same day, on June 2nd, from 3 to 5 p.m., we'll be holding a new and prospective member gathering at the home of Pokey and Buzz Barry. Uh, information about this gathering is in the bulletin. It's a great way to learn more about being Methodist and about this congregation, and we encourage all who are interested to come, especially if you've been visiting with us for some time and you'd like to connect the church a little bit more fully in this way. If you have any questions, if you're interested in cooking or with um, Eve or myself. Now, we always like to welcome visitors. It's good to see some people back with us who we haven't seen in a little while. You know, this time of year, you know, South Yarmouth Methodist Church in Florida and other places is, you know, coming together to the cave again. It's great to have Jackie Newman with us from Florida. She's singing in the choir already. Uh, welcome, welcome back. Um, also, you know, on a personal note, uh, you know, I want to say that uh, it's a treat for us to have some of our family here with us. I'd like us all to welcome our oldest daughter, Alicia, her husband, Ben, and then Elijah and Nora, um, their children, our grandchildren, church. <laughs> uh, and uh, let me see, I see some others back with us from Florida. Um, welcome. Do we have anybody here worshiping for the very first time? Very, very first time? Because we especially like to acknowledge those if we haven't done so already. If your schedule permits, everyone's invited to join for a time of continued fellowship and light refreshment in the parish hall after worship today. Just you know, enter through these doors here. Um, and now let's continue our service as the ushers light the candles and uh, we have a prayer.
match of all life. Ignite us with your love, burn in us with your beauty. And flame us with joy and delight, with courage and wisdom. Let no other energy drive us but you alone. That our lives may shine with the light of your kindness, mercy, and grace. Let us remain standing and sing our opening hymn, Come Join the Dance of Trinity, number 3017 in the Green Book.
to you so that when their hour comes you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me about righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer, about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it 
to you. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning. Good to see you all. So we have someone well, who's been here before. Uh, but it's nice to have him here. This is Elijah. Do you know everybody here, Elijah? Ladies. And then, you know, we have Isabel, right? Miss Battle, right? Miss Mary. So, y'all were able to hear me play this a little bit earlier, I think. Is that right? And Nora did as well, right? My sister. What is this thing? Anybody know? What is it like? A trumpet. That's right. So a trumpet is a musical instrument. Right? There's all different types of musical instruments. Can some of you name some other musical instruments? Yes. A violin. That's nice. Yes. Viola. Nice. Xylophone. A piano, yes. A trombone, yes. Good. I, I could, I'm sorry. That's okay. You all named a number of instruments. I'm sure that you could name more. Okay, I'm sure you could name more. We have some right here in the sanctuary all the time, right? Piano, organ, and pop. And then some instruments you play with your fingers on keys, right? like the piano. On the organ. Some instruments you might play with sticks. Anybody know what instrument might play with sticks? What? A what? Xylophone. That's right. Exactly. Wow. Let's put the xylophone in here. Drum set. That's right. That was more what I was thinking about. Xylophone. That's exactly right. And, and some instruments that you may you play with what? A bow. A bow. That's right. That's right. That's right. Sorry, one time. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you play instruments in all different ways, right? This is a brass instrument, and this instrument has valves, right? You press them with your fingers, but I'm pressing them with my fingers. Is the trumpet making any music? No. But it needs something else. What's it need? What's it need? Uh, where do you go? Where do I go? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I'm putting air into it. When Nora is playing her trumpet, we put air into it, right? And it's the air that fills the trumpet that brings it to life. It's the breath. This trumpet, any brass instrument, needs someone's breath for it to really come alive. Now, it's a trumpet without any breath, right? But for the trumpet to do its thing, to do what it was made to do, it needs someone to breathe into it to fill it with its breath, and then all sorts of things can happen. Wonderful things can happen. And that reminded me of this day. Today is Pentecost, and it's the day we remember a long, long time ago when the first followers of Jesus received a gift. They received the gift of God's breath. The Spirit of God filled them in a way it hadn't been before. It wasn't there before. But it filled them in a new way, and it changed them. It changed them from, from frightened, timid followers of Jesus, not sure what to do next, what's going to happen after Jesus had died, to becoming bold and finding courage and being able to not only talk about what Jesus taught, but to do the things that Jesus was doing. They continued his ministry because they were filled with this spirit, this additional breath of God. And we celebrate that today. And it's worth celebrating, not only because it happened a long time ago, but because it continues to happen today. You and I can continue to be filled with God's breath. We can be moved by the thing we call the Holy Spirit. And it can help us find courage when we're afraid. It can comfort us when we're sad. It can help us make the right decisions. And all of this is being more full with the breath of God that is all around us. And it's not so many 
but we can do certain things to have this breath fill us even more fully and completely. And you know what? You're doing one of those things right now. You're coming together with others who celebrate this breath of God that gives us life and makes us come alive. And you're also okay, coming together with others to learn about God and how God is with us and how God's Spirit continues to fill us and encourage us to be all we were meant to be. All we were meant to be. And a really important way of doing this also is by taking time to pray. So I want to thank you all for being here today for celebrating Pentecost, the gift of God's breath and life and spirit that fills us and others and how we can do things to have this breath flow through us in ways that beautiful music is played throughout our lives. Yes? Well, I, I got a good day to bring bubbles. That's a good day to bring bubbles. That's part of the <laughs> celebration. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for celebrating Pentecost. Why don't we have a prayer together? We continue with our time in the chum this morning. Let us pray. Our God, Lord, Lord,
say it's really good to see so many of you in red. Thank you. Thank you. Look great. It's a fun way to celebrate Pentecost together. Um, I also want to say that it's a treat to be able to play trumpet with our granddaughter for all of you. Thank you. Thank you for listening, for receiving, for holding it, for supporting us, loving us. I stand before you every single week, and I don't get cotton mouth.
uh, science seminary, every congregation's choir where I've served, including the Hamburger Choir. In one choir in which I sang, there was an extraordinary bass singer. Uh, he was just an amazing singer. His name is David. And he not only sang in the church choir, he also auditioned for and sang in the Hartford Chorale. All right, so this guy's good. So David has an excellent ear. He can just find the right pitch. Yeah, I struggle with that a little bit. You know, um, he reads music really, really well, much better than me too. He's clearly the leader of the section, the bass section, they're really the whole choir. But here's the thing, because he was so good, others tended to lean on him, right? Just listen to David. And I know for myself, I became a little lazy at times when it came to singing in the choir because I always knew that David knew the music. <laughs> there might have been a part of an anthem I didn't know too well, but I didn't worry about it too much because, you know, David would know it. I would just listen to him. You, you know what I'm saying, right? So I didn't like feeling uncertain or insecure at times about different parts of the music, but I figured it would all work out because David would take care of it. And this approach worked really, really well, most of the time, until David wasn't there. <laughs> it didn't happen often, but occasionally he'd miss a rehearsal, or worse, a Sunday morning, and when he did, I panicked. Because right? instantly I knew my singing would be more exposed. I couldn't get cover from David. Instantly, I knew I had to work harder and pay additional attention to make sure that I could sing the anthem really, really well. I knew I'd have to take greater ownership of my part. Now, at, at times, this could all be really stressful, really stressful. But I also discovered that when David wasn't there, it was an opportunity. An opportunity to grow and to further discover that with a little extra work, I can often hold my own. But the point is, I would not have made the additional effort, or I would not have developed the necessary self-confidence, or even become a better singer, without David occasionally not being there. You know, I've thought about this dynamic some over the years, and believe it relates to the reading that Margaret shared with us relates at least in part to what the disciples experienced on Pentecost. The verses from the Gospel of John are part of a larger section of Jesus' final discourse, and his farewell address to his followers. He shares these words right before him being arrested, put on trial, and being executed. And these final words, they, they only appear in the Gospel of John, but they contain some of the most insightful and beautiful parts of all of Scripture. And in this section, Jesus tells his followers that although he will be leaving them, God will send another, another presence in his place, an advocate who will assist them. Jesus acknowledges his followers are going to be sad when he leaves, but then he says an extraordinary thing. I don't know if you've heard it. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So the point Jesus is making is this advocate, which is another term for the Holy Spirit, will not come until Jesus leaves, until he makes the space for it to happen. Once Jesus does this, the space is created for the gift to come in greater measure to all of his followers. Then the disciples will be able to grow in their own self-confidence as leaders, ambassadors for Christ, as children and people of God. Something clearly happened after the resurrection. And it turned a group of small, timid, frightened followers who were hiding in locked rooms, worried that they were next, into courageous and bold witnesses and leaders. The New Testament tells us what happened is the Holy Spirit came. It came upon them. The Spirit not only came through them, but it, but it, it filled them. But it could only come after Jesus left. 
It's as if when the disciples had Jesus there with them, they knew that they could always lean on him to make things right. If Jesus was there and the disciples, you know, got in trouble, he could bail them out. It was nice having Jesus around. However, when Jesus left, they couldn't lean on him. They had to decide. Step up or not. Now they could have chosen to shrink before this opportunity. And we wouldn't be here. Instead they made the decision to take even greater responsibility for their own lives, for their faith, and for Jesus' ministry and his message. They decided to push themselves a little more, to work a little bit harder, to pay better attention, develop their own gifts, take some risks, and trust that God had given them all they really needed to continue doing what Jesus had been doing. And Jesus knew that they could do this before they knew they could do it. He even said this to them before he left. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these. That's in the Gospel of John. Jesus knew his disciples, his followers, the people around him, had it what was in them to make this transition. But they weren't going to grow in their self-confidence or ability until Jesus was. <coughs> and this could be a tricky dynamic for sure. But my friends, it's one that's worth paying attention to. And we all benefit, obviously, right? We all benefit from being with people who have experience, both education and training in certain areas, people who have demonstrated repeatedly, you know, gifts and talents and effectiveness, people who, who serve as leaders and mentors and teachers and examples for us. We all benefit. It's a blessing to be with talented, inspired, and skilled people. But sometimes, sometimes, if we lean on these people too much, we can fail to develop our own gifts, and take full responsibility for our own talents and faith and lives. This is true. And this truth applies not only to, to playing in bands or singing in choirs, it applies to really every aspect of our lives. For example, yeah, I've, I've listened to many people over the years, after experiencing the death of a spouse, wonder, honestly wonder, how they were going to do some of the things that their loved one had always done for them as a team, as a partnership. They're cooking, taking care of all the finances, you know, doing the yard work, the house, whatever needed to be done. And I've also seen over and over again, with the appropriate assistance, these same individuals learn over time that they could do these things. By God's grace and with some additional help, they were able to do these things. God has promised to be with us, to assist us, and guide us through the gift of the Holy Spirit. And when we trust this truth and go forward in faith, we can surprise ourselves at what we are able to do. And what God is able to do through us. Your praying is another example, my friends. I've talked about this recently. When we get together as a church, perhaps for a meeting or a study or a meal or some other occasion, it's time for prayer, the pastor is present. What do you do? Who do you ask to do the prayer? Well, I get that. I understand. This is what I do, right? But all of us can pray. All of us can pray. To be honest with you, some of the best prayers that I have heard in my lifetime have not come from clergy people. They have not. And something interesting has started to happen in our family. When we gather for a meal, it's time for grace when our family kind of gets together. Usually I'm the one called upon to offer grace. It's assumed. However, the last couple of years, a few times, our grandson, Elijah, who's going to be turning 11 next week now, has asked to offer grace for the family. Now, <clears throat> when he first did this, I can still remember. <clears throat> he lowered his voice. <laughs> he was sounding a little bit like a <laughs> But you know, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And it took courage to do that. <laughs> he decided to 
put himself out there with these other adults around the table who were offering him. Right? He decided to put himself out there, and because he was willing to do so, he's learning and growing and gaining experience, and he's offering something for the rest of us. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. You know, as, as, as I've thought about this dynamic, I was reminded of something the late um, Reverend Dr. William Sloan Coffin said. He was the former pastor of the Riverside Church in New York City. He said, we want God to be strong so we can be weak. But God wants to be weak so we can be strong. Incredible insight. The way we continue to grow is to increasingly take greater ownership of our lives, our faith, rather than rely too heavily on others to do this for us. My friends, let's continue to take the steps we need to do to do this in all areas of our lives so we'll continue to become the people God is encouraging us to always. Yeah.
commandments, ways of, of expressing our thanks for all the gifts and blessings that you share with us each and every day. And, and on this day especially, we give thanks to you for your breath of life that fills us and animates us, that enables us to enjoy this gift, the sacred gift of our being. We also give thanks for the way your Holy Spirit can guide us and direct us and comfort us and bless us in countless ways. Here we ask that these gifts would be used in such a way that your Spirit's presence would be encouraged in our lives and the lives of many others. These things we pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Service, we'd like to invite each other into a little extended period of time of prayer and reflection. We'd ask that we remember those who are listed in the bulletin of today. Let's have a time now of shared silence where we can offer to God the prayers of our hearts and then I'll guide us in the, in the closing prayer. Let us pray. God, sometimes there are things that we know we should do or we need to do. But we'd still not rather do them. We're fine deferring to someone else or having them take responsibility. Or we've simply gotten used to others doing these things for us. And yet at times your spirit requires us to take your risks that are needed to do the extra work involved so that we will grow and gain valuable experience through taking on these different opportunities. At other times, there could be things we aren't sure we can do, even though we would really like to, or because of a lack of self-confidence or you know, a fear of failure or you know, we'd be too worried about embarrassing ourselves. Or you know, we'd come up with a list of all sorts of reasons why we won't try it. And yet your spirit keeps on urging us, encouraging us to give it a try. To discover new things about ourselves and others. And there can also be times when you know, things come up in our lives in this world that we could do, but we want you to do them. And we expect you to care. To do what needs to be done, rather than each of us do more ourselves. And if we're honest, it can be easier to expect you to do these things and then get disappointed with you when they don't happen. Rather than do them ourselves. Lord, help us not to be afraid, to continue to grow, no matter how young or old we might be, to grow in the ways you would have us grow. Encourage us to continue to take full ownership of our lives and not expect you to do what we can do for ourselves. And Lord, we humbly ask that you would continue to fill us with your spirit and in our ability to trust its guidance, its wisdom, promptings. And we thank you for the times we've done this in the past, the different ways our lives have expanded through doing so. Thank you, Lord, for the activity of your Spirit in this world, encouraging us all to be the best disciples and human beings we can be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite us to stand and sing our closing hymn, number 539, O Spirit of the Living God.
a place for us to go in peace. May the amazing grace of Jesus Christ, the extraordinary love and faithfulness and generosity of God, and the constant presence, the sustaining presence of God's Holy Spirit be with each and all of you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.